Has American politics reduced itself to a corporate duopoly? A question that stirs the pot and puts the spotlight on the two-party system, the Democrats and Republicans, that has long dominated the political landscape of the United States. Are these two parties just two sides of the same corporate coin? Have they become mere puppets in the hands of their corporate sponsors? To answer this question we must delve into the policies of these two parties. Let's start with the Democrats, the party that champions itself as the party of the people. The Democrats are known for their progressive stance on a variety of issues such as healthcare, education and social justice. They advocate for policies like universal healthcare, increased minimum wage, and stricter gun control. But let's take a closer look at how their policies are influenced by corporate interests. In the realm of economic policies, the Democrats have advocated for the regulation of big corporations, but often these regulations end up benefiting the same corporations they're supposed to control. For instance, a large company can afford the costs of complying with regulations, while smaller competitors cannot. This creates a barrier to entry for smaller businesses, inadvertently strengthening the position of the corporate giants. When we shift our focus to social policies, we see a similar pattern. The Democrats push for progressive policies like diversity and inclusion in the workplace. However, these policies can be co-opted by corporations who use them to improve their public image without making substantive changes. They might hire a diverse workforce, but fail to address systemic issues like wage gaps and discrimination. In the sphere of international relations, the Democrats support free trade agreements like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. While these agreements can boost economic growth, they often prioritize corporate interests over workers' rights. These policies can lead to job losses at home and exploitation of cheap labor abroad. Furthermore, campaign finance and lobbying play a significant role in shaping these policies. Democrats, like their Republican counterparts, receive substantial donations from corporations. These donations can and often do influence the policies they advocate for. For instance, it's no coincidence that big pharma and health insurance companies donate heavily to Democrats who oppose Medicare for all. So, despite the Democratic Party's progressive image, it's clear that corporate interests play a significant role in shaping its policies. It's not that they're the bad guys, it's that the system itself is structured in a way that incentivizes politicians to prioritize corporate interests. And this is just one side of the coin. Now let's turn our attention to the Republicans, the party that prides itself on being pro-business. The Republicans have a long-standing reputation for favoring free market capitalism, less regulation, and lower taxes. Policies that tend to attract the corporate world like bees to honey. Let's delve into their economic policies. Republicans champion the idea of trickle-down economics, arguing that lessening the tax burden on corporations will spur economic growth. They contend that when corporations thrive, so does the rest of the economy. However, critics argue this policy favors the wealthy and corporations at the expense of middle and low-income families. Moving on to social policies, you'll find that Republicans tend to hold conservative stances on issues like abortion, gun control, and immigration. But how do corporations come into play here? Consider the private prison industry, which has reportedly contributed millions to Republican campaigns. In return, they've seen policies that favor tougher immigration laws and longer prison sentences, which increase the demand for their services. In terms of international relations, the Republican Party typically favors strong military spending. This benefits the defense industry, which often generously contributes to Republican candidates. For instance, during the 2020 election, the top five defense contractors reportedly donated more to Republican candidates than Democrats. But it's not just about campaign contributions. Corporate influence also seeps into policymaking through lobbying where corporations spend billions to sway legislation in their favor. Take for example the pharmaceutical industry. It's no secret that they've successfully lobbied for policies that protect high drug prices, a position more aligned with Republican views. In sum, the Republican Party's policies, whether economic, social or international, are not immune to corporate influence. It's a complex dance of give and take, where policies are shaped not just by ideology, but also by the interests of those with deep pockets. Like the Democrats, the Republicans also seem to be heavily influenced by corporate interests. Both parties, while ideologically different, seem to serve the same masters. Intriguing, isn't it? The Democratic Party and Republican Party, despite their vast ideological differences, appear to be influenced by similar corporate entities. 
It's like a grand theater where the actors change, but the script remains the same. The plot, however, isn't as fictional as it may seem. Let's take a closer look. In the political sphere, corporations play a significant role. They are the puppeteers, pulling the strings behind the scenes, ensuring that their interests are secured, regardless of who's in power. You see, corporations are not bound by party lines. Their loyalty is to their bottom line, and they understand the power of a well-placed donation. For instance, consider the pharmaceutical industry. It's no secret that they donate generously to both parties. In the 2020 election cycle, pharmaceutical companies split their contributions almost evenly between Democrats and Republicans. The industry knows that having influence with both parties is crucial for shaping policy that suits their interests, or take the tech giants. Companies like Google, Facebook and Amazon have been known to contribute to both sides of the aisle. They understand that in the world of politics, it pays to have friends in high places, regardless of their political affiliation. This trend isn't limited to a few sectors. It's a widespread phenomenon, from Wall Street to Silicon Valley, from the energy sector to the defense industry. They all understand the game and play it well. But what does this mean for us, the people? Well, it means that the policies and decisions that affect our lives are often influenced by corporate interests. It means that our democracy isn't as straightforward as it appears. So while we see Democrats and Republicans battling it out on the political stage, remember that behind the scenes they are often dancing to the same tune. A tune played by the powerful corporate interests that fund their campaigns and shape their policies. It's evident that corporate influence permeates both sides of the aisle. So what does this mean for American democracy? Well, let's dive into the implications of this corporate duopoly on our politics and democracy. Imagine the federal political landscape as a machine, a complex network of gears and levers, each intricately linked to one another. The two biggest gears in this machine, the Democratic and Republican parties, are powered by the same motor, corporate interests. Now how does this machine operate? Its main function is to keep the status quo. The two parties, despite their apparent differences, have a common goal, to maintain a balance of power that serves their corporate backers. It's a symbiotic relationship. The corporations provide financial support to the parties, and in return, the parties enact policies that favor these corporations. This federal political machine has profound implications for the democratic process. When the majority of political power is concentrated in the hands of a duopoly, it stifles competition and innovation in policymaking. It limits the range of ideas that can be introduced into the political discourse, often leaving out perspectives that don't align with corporate interests. Moreover, it creates a barrier to entry for third parties and independents. Without the backing of corporate dollars, these smaller political players struggle to gain traction in a landscape dominated by the duopoly. This results in a lack of true political diversity and a stifling of voices that might challenge the status quo. The influence of this machine even extends to the voting booth. Many voters feel compelled to choose between the lesser of two evils, rather than voting for a candidate who truly represents their values and interests. This leads to a disillusionment with the political process and a sense of disenfranchisement among the electorate. So, the question we must ask ourselves is, to what extent does this corporate duopoly serve the interests of the American people, and to what extent does it serve the interests of the corporations that fuel it? In many ways, it seems that the American political system has become a well-oiled corporate machine. So are the Democrats and Republicans just two sides of the same coin? This question, posed at the outset, has been our guiding beacon throughout this exploration. We've delved into the intricate web of policies, corporate influence, and the inner workings of the federal political machine. To revisit our journey, we started with the premise of how policies are often driven by corporate interests. We've discovered that both Democrats and Republicans, despite their differing ideologies, are not immune to this influence. From healthcare to environmental policies, we've seen how corporations shape the agenda, often prioritizing profit over public interest. We further explored the concept of a corporate duopoly, highlighting how two dominant parties can limit the political discourse. The Democrats and Republicans, as the two major players, often overshadow alternative voices, thereby indirectly maintaining a status quo that favors corporate interests. Lastly, we unveiled the federal political machine, a system where power is consolidated and perpetuated by these two parties. Here, we noted the lack of significant third-party representation and the barriers that inhibit their growth, ultimately reinforcing the corporate duopoly. 
In summary, while Democrats and Republicans may have distinct stances on numerous issues, the influence of corporations on their policies is a common thread that binds them. This realization challenges us to reassess our understanding of American democracy, prompting us to ask, while the parties may differ on various issues when it comes to corporate influence, they are indeed more similar than they may appear. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.